All right, so um, I'm going to talk about the complex numbers. And why do we really need complex numbers? So if you want to, already initially we discussed on some different types of number systems. We spoke about the whole numbers. We spoke about the natural numbers. We spoke about the integers, the real numbers, we spoke about rational numbers, and then the real numbers. Okay, so we spoke about rational and then the real. Then the idea is that what if we want to find the negative, right, of uh, the square root of a negative number? So the square root of a negative number. The square root of a negative number is what brings us the idea of imaginary numbers. Of course, they arise in so many places. So if you want to find even the quadratic equation, the solution, and you have the, the, the discriminant, the term under the integral, to be negative, you, your results will be complex numbers. Of course, differential equations as well is a very practical application where we need complex numbers because of the solutions. So what is a complex number? If x and y, if x and y are real numbers, then we can write this, which is x plus i of y, and call this a complex number. The x component, the x component here is called the real part, and we represent it with the re of z. And the y component is called the imaginary part, and we write imaginary of z, i am of z. So, in that sense, the complex number consists of two parts, the real part and then the imaginary part. So for example, if I write z is equal to three plus four i, then three is the real part and four is the imaginary part. Again, if I write z is equal to four i, in such a case, we say that we have what we call a pure imaginary number because the real part is not there. And we can have other examples like z is equal to minus three plus i square root of two, or z is equal to two square root of two plus i. These are all examples of complex numbers. So if you have complex numbers, can we do some arithmetic operations on these complex numbers? And that is what we tend to investigate next. So if you are if you give if I if you are giving z1 to be x1 plus i y1 and z2 to be x2 plus i y2, where x1, x2, y1, y2 are all real numbers, then we can do subtraction. We can write x1 plus i y1 plus x2 plus i, y2. And then we group like terms where x, the real part, we add the real part separately and then we add the imaginary part as well. So this becomes the real part, this becomes the imaginary part. Of course, we can subtract them as well. And we have z1 minus z2, you'll get x1 minus x2 plus i, y1 minus y2. So, Usually, I write z1 plus or minus z2 is equal to x plus or minus x1 plus or minus x2 plus i, y1 plus or minus y2, depending on whether I'm, whether I'm doing a subtraction or an addition. So, example, if I have z1 to be 3 plus i, and z2 to be i plus i minus 2i, 1 minus 2i, then z1 plus z2 is, means 3 plus i plus 1 minus 2i. 
and then I can group the like terms. This is the real part three here, and then the real part here. I add them, and then I also take the imaginary parts, and then I put them together, and I'll get four minus i. Of course, we can subtract as well the same way. We have three plus i minus one minus two i. We can group the like terms, so we have three minus one plus i plus two i, and then you have two plus three i. Can we multiply these complex numbers? So if you have again z1, z2, where the same x1, x2, y1, y2 are all real numbers, then if we multiply them, that is, if you take z1 and multiply it with z2, then we can multiply x1 plus i1 into bracket, then x2 plus i2 into bracket. Then you can expand, you expand the terms, then you take your x1, you multiply it with this term, take your plus i y1, multiply it again with the z2 term. If you do that, you can expand it out. And then finally, you will get x1, x2 minus y1, y2 plus i, x1, y1 plus x2, y2. Because we know that i squared is equal to minus 1, and we have used that here. We have used the fact that i squared is equal to minus 1 here. So if you use that, then you get x1, x3 minus y1, y2 plus i, x1, y2 plus x2. What about division? Can we divide? Can we divide complex numbers? So we can divide, of course. Um, we can divide if we have a complex number, if we have a complex number z, We have a complex number z, z to be given by x plus i y. Then, for complex numbers, we need a complex conjugate. So the complex conjugate of z, which is x plus i y, is z bar, which is x minus i y. So the imaginary part becomes a negative. And we say that if you find the product of a complex number and its complex conjugate, here in this case, you see x plus i y times x minus i y, then it's just the same as what we mean by a squared minus b, which is a plus b into bracket a minus b. So if you apply that same principle here, then x plus i y times x minus i y will give us x squared minus i y squared. And this gives us x squared plus y squared because we know i squared is equal to minus one. We are using it again here. And that gives us again to x squared plus y squared. So if I give you z and then I say that what is z and this component, it just means z and z uh, complex is the, is the sum of the squares of the individual components. So now if we have z2 to be x2 plus y2, i y2, then we can divide z1 over z2 that's provided z2 is not zero itself. And this basically means that we find the complex conjugate of the denominator, that is Z2, and multiply both the numerator and the denominator by this complex conjugate. So in this case, we have X1 plus IY1 over X2 plus IY2. So we find the complex conjugate of X2 plus IY2, which is X2 minus IY2. And then we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by this complex conjugate. If we do that, then the denominator is again the complex number multiplying up its complex conjugate 
So it becomes the sum of squares of the individual components x squared, x2 squared plus y2 squared. And then the numerator becomes a product of x1 plus iy1, x2 minus iy2. So let's take examples. I want to find product of 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus minus 1 plus 2. Then I can just expand. I take 2. I multiply it with 6 brackets minus 1 plus 2i. Then I take plus 3i and I multiply it with the bracket minus 1 plus 2i. If I do that, then I will get minus 2 plus 4i in one bracket. Minus 2 plus 4i minus 3 plus 6i squared. Again, we know i squared is equal to minus 1. So if we use it, then we know plus 4i minus 3i is i, and then plus 6i squared is minus 6, and then we have minus 3, and 10. Finally, we have minus 8 plus i. Again, if you want to divide, so if we have 1 over 2 plus 5i, then as I said, what you do in such a case is find the complex conjugate of the denominator. So in this case, the denominator is 2 plus 5i. So I find the complex conjugate of it, which is 2 minus 5i, and then I multiply the numerator and the denominator by this complex conjugate. If I do that, then it's 2 squared plus 5 squared as the denominator and 2 minus 5i as the numerator. And this gives us 2 minus i5 over 29. And this, we can write it in terms of the individual components, 2 over 29 minus 5 over 29i. So we know we can add, we can subtract, we can multiply, as well as we can divide complex numbers. And this gives us many properties or many ideas that we can talk about. So Z, for instance, we say that Z, which is X plus IY, is zero if and only if X is zero and Y is also zero. And we call this the additive. We call this the additive. Identity, right? Or this additive identity. Additive identity. Of course, the negative of the complex number Z is the same as minus X minus IY, and we call this the additive inverse, right? The inverse. So we know the complex number, we know its complex conjugate, we know its additive identity and additive inverse. Now we say that the real part of Z, which is X, is the average of the, com of the complex number and its complex conjugate. Here. Yeah. All right. And then the imaginary part Y is the difference of the complex number Z and its complex conjugate minus Z bar over two of I. We can write the complex number Z in terms of a complex coordinate in a complex plane. So we can represent Z by X of Y. If you have three complex numbers, x, z1, z2, and z3, then we know that we can add them, we can multiply them by means of an associative law or a commutative property in addition or a commutative property in multiplication. We can do an associative property well in, in, in multiplication and then an associate property in addition. And then we can talk about the distribution right, of 
of Z1 times Z2 plus Z3 with Z1, Z2 plus Z1, Z3. We can write a complex number in terms of a trigonometric form, in a trigonometric form or in a polar form. So if you have a complex number Z to be X plus I of Y, and we said you can write it also as X comma Y in the coordinate in what we refer to as a complex plane, then on the complex plane, we have the imaginary axis and the real axis. So here we have imaginary axis here, and then here we have the real axis. If you do that, and then you have a point Z, which is X or Y, then we can withdraw a 90 degree angle to the real axis, so that we create a 90 degree angle there. Then we have uh, x, y, and then an angle theta which subtends the real axis. And so this gives us idea of Pythagoras theorem that we can use. Where now the absolute value of the complex number, which is the modulus, or what you call maybe the hypotenuse, is given by the square root of x squared plus y squared, which is exactly this x squared. So example, if you give you z is equal to six plus five i, then the absolute value or the modulus it's nothing else but the square root of 6 squared plus 5 squared. This is equal to 36, the square root of 36 plus 25, and this is the same, equal to the square root of 61. If we take the second example, which is that is equal to minus 4 plus 6i, then the absolute value of the modulus is the square root minus 4 squared plus 6 squared, which is equal to 16 plus 36, which is 52 square roots. We can write... Then in the polar coordinate form, such that now the modulus we say is equal to r. If we do that, then from this theta here, here, we can see that we can write cos theta to be x over r and theta to be y over r, and then we can also write tan theta to be y over x. And that means that we can write x in terms of the modulus and then the angle, which is r cos theta, and y also to be equal to r sine theta. So if we substitute this x coordinate and this new x values and x and y values into our complex number, which is x plus i y, then we'll have r cos theta plus i r sine theta. Can factor out the r such that we now have r is equal to cos theta plus i sine theta. And we call this polar form of the complex number, polar form. Where r is the modulus and the angle theta is called the argument, the argument. So if I give you z is equal to two plus two i, and then z is equal to minus one minus square root of three i. Then we can write again this in the polar form. The polar form means that we can write this as z is equal to r cos theta plus i sine theta. So if you want to write the polar form, first you need to find the modulus. So the modulus means in this case, for for example, one we have x is true, y is true. We have x is true, y is true. So the modulus is the square root of x squared, which is two squared plus two squared. And this is the square root of eight, which is two square root of two. And then you want to find then the angle, which is theta. So you can use tan theta is equal to y over x, 
In this case, y is 2, x is 2, so it's equal to 1. So tan theta is equal to 1. Then we can find the inverse. So theta then is equal to tan inverse of 1, and this is 45 degrees or pi over 4. So now we can write x to be 2 square root of 2 plus pi over 4 plus pi sine pi over 4. So it's very, very important in this case where angle lines. So this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, this is quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. If we call this a zero, if we start here, zero, then we go round from here up to here to the two pi. In, in each of the quadrants, in each of these quadrants, if we're in quadrant one, then we know that this is the angle theta. If we are in quadrant two, then what we are actually calculating for is this angle. So we will have to subtract then this angle from pi. If you are in quadrant three, then you are calculating for this angle here. So you need to add now this angle to your pi to get the exact angle. So the second example says, if we have z now to be minus one minus square root of three i, this here is in quadrant three. Of course, the modulus is the square root of one squared minus one squared plus minus square root of three squared. And this is square root of one plus three, which is square root of four, which is equal to two. And then now we want to find the angle it makes. But you should bear in mind that in this case now, we are, this angle we are calculating here is theta one. This is the angle we are calculating. And this is basically tan theta one is equal to the square root of three. And so theta one is tan inverse of the square root of three, which is pi over three. But the angle we are looking for is actually from here up to actually is from here up to here. So we add this theta one to pi, because from here to here is pi, 180 degrees. If we do that, then we get that theta, now that we are looking for to be four over pi, four over three of pi. So we can write that now the polar form, two cos four over three pi plus i sine four over three pi. What about multiplication and division? Can we multiply polar, polar coordinates, polar form? Can we divide them? Can we add them? Can we subtract them? Some arithmetic on the polar form. So if we start with two polar forms of two of complex numbers, that's one. To be R1 cos theta 1 plus I sine theta 1. And Z2 to be R2 cos theta 2 plus I sine theta 2. We can multiply them. If you multiply them, then it means Z1 times Z2 is equal to R1, R2 into bracket plus theta plus theta 1 plus theta 2 plus I sine theta 1 plus I two plus theta 2. If we divide, then this is R1 over R2 into bracket plus theta 1 minus theta 2 plus I sine theta 1 minus theta 2. Of course, the proof is important and it's left for you to check and verify. But important identity you use is the trigonometric addition rule or law. And I write two of them here, two of them here. Cause A plus B is equal to cause A cause B minus side A side B and side A plus B is equal to side A cause B plus sine B cos A. Very important identities 
that will enable you to show for multiplication of polar forms. So if we take an example, if you have z1 to be two square root of two, cos pi over four plus i sine pi over four, and z2 is four times cos four over four pi over three plus i sine four pi over three, then we can multiply z1 and z2 as well as divide them. If we multiply, just as we said, this is your R1. So your R1 here is two square root of two. Your theta one is pi over four. Your R2 is four. Your theta two is four over pi, four pi over three. So you can just substitute them. R1 times R2 cos theta one plus theta two plus i sine theta one plus theta two. If you do that, then you get eight square root of two cos 19 over 12 pi plus i sine 19 over 12 pi. If you divide them, then you have two over two square root of two over four cos pi over four minus four pi over three plus i sine pi over four minus four pi over three. And this gives us square root of two over two or 13 over 12 pi minus sine 13 over 12 pi. What about the powers of complex numbers? If you have a complex number, x is equal to x plus i of y, where x and y are real, where x and y are real, then the power just means, can you find the square, the cube, power four, power five, power six, power seven, and so on. So for instance, if we want to find the square, then we use the usual identities. So if we have one, we have one, two, one, we have one, we have one, We have one, three, three, one. We have one, four, six, four, one. And this is the Pascal square. Or the binomial theorem to give you the expansion that you need. So if I want to go for x, z squared, this is x plus i squared. And this means x squared plus 2xiy plus i y squared and this will be x squared minus y squared plus 2 i x y if you want to find for z to the power 3 then it's x plus i y to the power 3 which is then to use this identity so it's x cubed plus 3 x squared that is i y plus 3 x i y squared plus i y cubed if we expand, then you have x cubed plus 3i x squared y plus 3i squared x y squared plus i cube y cube. And this, we use the fact that i cube is equal to i squared times i, and this is equal to minus 1 times i, this is minus i. So i cube is minus i. So we make the substitution for i cube, and then we simplify the terms and group like terms together. So you can see if we have to do for z4, z5, z6, z16, and so on, it becomes laborious because you have to rely on the binomial theory. And the more terms that you require, the longer the calculations. However, We can use the Morph theorem that says that if you have z given by x plus i y, you can write it in terms of it, a polar form. And then if you use the polar form, then by repeated multiplication, you'll be able to write z to the power n is equal to r to the power n cos n theta plus i sine n theta. And this 
enables us to find any powers of a complex number. So example, if you have, if, if you have z is 2 plus 2i, and we have to find z4, then the first is to find the modulus. The modulus in this case is 2 square root of 2. And the next is to find the angle theta, which is tan inverse of 1, because it is tan theta, which is y over z. And this means it is 1, and then tan inverse of 1 is 45 degrees or pi over 4. So now if you want to find z to the power 4, or 2 plus 2i to the power 4, we can write it in the in terms of the polar form and then put in now the form. So we have r to the power four, which is our r now is two square root of two to the power four. Then we have cos, then we have n, the power n multiplying the angle theta, which is pi over four plus i sine four times pi over four. So if we simplify, then we have 64, then we have cos pi, because this one will cancel out, and then we have cos pi plus i sine pi. We know cos pi is minus one, and sine pi is zero. So we can substitute 64 into bracket minus one plus zero, and this gives us minus 64. What about the end roots of complex numbers? If you have a complex number in its complex, so we know, we know that by the more, we have a nice way of writing the powers. Now, the nth root of a complex number is given by a WK is equal to R to the power one over N plus theta plus two K pi over N plus i sine theta plus 2k pi over n for k going from 0 to n minus 1. So example, if you want to find the square root, square root, then we mean that n is equal to 2. Of z is equal to 4 cos pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3. Then we know theta is pi over 3, r is 4, and k will be 0 and 1. So if you want to find the 0 root, w0, then we have 4 to the power 1 over 2. Then cos, now theta is pi over 3, plus 2 of k, right? We have 2 times k times pi. But we know k is 0. So it goes to zero all over n, which is two. And we have i sine pi over three plus zero over two. Then this gives us two cos pi over six plus i sine pi over six. That cos, but cos pi over six is nothing else but square root of three over two. And sine pi over six is half. So we make substitution, then we expand this yields square root of three plus i. If we put in the k is equal to one term, uh, then we have four to the power one over two cos pi over three plus two pi over two plus i sine pi over three plus two pi over two. Of course, because we said two k pi, and now we know that we know that k is equal to one, so it will be two pi. That is why we have this 2 pi here. So if you multiply and if you add and you simplify, then you have 2 cos 7 over 6 pi plus i sine 7 over 6 pi. Cos 7 over 6 pi is nothing but minus square root of 3 over 2. And sine 7 over 6 pi is nothing else but minus i minus half. If you make your substitutions, then you have two times minus square root of three over two minus i over two. If you multiply two by two, then we have minus square root of three and minus i. 
So we have the two square root of three times nine minus seven three. What about exponential form? So we know that we can write, we know that complex number in a polar form, z is equal to r cos theta plus i sin theta. Plus, plus cos theta plus i sin theta is equal to e to the power i of x. This is an example of what we call violent so if we make the substitution then we can write x to be equal to r exponent i of theta and this is what we call exponential form exponential form of the complex number. Of course, we can write it conjugate. The conjugate of the exponential form is nothing but z bar is r exponent minus r of theta. And this e minus r of theta is nothing else but for theta minus i sin theta. Some properties of this exponential form is you can do z to the power n where n is a positive integer, and this will give you r to the power n exponent i n of theta. Of course, if you do expansion of this, if you do your expansion of this, you get r n, you get cos n theta plus i sine. So, cos theta, which we will say is the imagine the real part of the polar coordinate, right, is the exponent i theta plus exponent minus i theta over 2. And sine theta is exponent i theta minus exponent minus minus i theta over 2i. Of course, if you are giving two exponential forms, z1 is r1 exponent i theta 1, and z2 is r2 exponent i theta 2, then we can find the product. z1 times z2 is equal to r1 r2 exponent i theta 1 plus theta 2 into bracket. And z1 over z2 is r1 over r2 exponent i theta 1 minus theta 2. So, so as an example, if we take the exponential form of i of pi, and we say this is equal to cos pi plus i sine pi, and we know cos pi is minus one and plus sine pi is zero. We can substitute it and this gives us minus one. So exponent i pi is equal to minus one. You take another example, then if we have z to be equal to three exponent i five over six. And we want to express this, we want to express in the Cartesian right? Cartesian. What does it mean? So it means that z is equal to three e minus pi e i e of i pi over six 
decomposes as three. Now you have force pi over six plus i sine pi six. And this is three cos pi over six is So zero point eight six six seven eight six six zero plus I let sine pi over six is equal to sine pi over six is equal to so maybe I write it in three over two and then this is I over two. So if you multiply two, then this will be three over two square root of three plus three over two. So this goes from the exponential form to the Cartesian form. So we can have from the Cartesian, the Cartesian to polar and then we can go to the exponential form complex. Of course you can go from the exponential back to the, the Cartesian form. You can go again the polar form as well. And we can go from the polar also to the Cartesian form as well. So with that, we end the topic.